The bandsaw. It's one of the most versatile tools in the workshop. You're not going to use it for every task, but for the task that it, it excels at, it's going to be the tool of choice and about the only one that will do the job for you. For example, it will rip cut, which is cutting along the grain. It will cross cut, it'll, which is per generally perpendicular or across the grain. As you saw me demonstrate, it will also cut freehand curves. And the, one of the only tools that will do this in the workshop is what's called resawing, where you actually turn the board vertical and cut it into thinner strips for making plywood or uh, exotic woods for tabletops, etc. So to summarize, the bandsaw is a very versatile tool. It's not used on every task, but when you need it, it's the tool of choice. Let's move on to safety on the bandsaw. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the instructions and safety guidelines that come with your manual. Because knowing how to use your power tools safely will greatly reduce the, per the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there's no more important safety rule than to wear these, your safety glasses. The bandsaw is a very, it's a versatile tool, and it's also relatively safe. You have to literally try to cut your finger off on this tool. There's no, the risk of amputation is very, very little. The, it's due to the fact that kickback is almost non-existent. If you let go of the board, the board's not going to come back. The way the blade rotates, it always keeps a downward pressure on this. You do have to pay attention to where your hands are and you're not violating the margin of safety. You do have to position the guard appropriate height and keep all the, the guide blocks in the, in the right setting and everything will run smoothly. Let's talk about how the bandsaw operates. First thing you have is you've got a wheel cover and you have the wheels. You've got an upper and a lower wheel. The blade rotates around both wheels through the guide assembly and we'll talk about how to adjust that. Were you paying attention? Did you notice there was a safety violation? I deliberately created one to see if you were really paying attention. The bandsaw has been plugged in. Remember, follow safety guidelines by unplugging your tools when you're making adjustments. So we talked about the wheel and the wheel cover. A switch is going to be located differently on each particular model. Some are on the throat, which is this part that goes up and down. Some are on the base of the unit. Sometimes you'll even see the motor in a cabinet rather than on a stand like in this particular model here. You have your lower wheel and lower wheel cover. The thing that you're going to need to worry about the most is what's called the guide and guard assembly. This part up here does the guard, the, covers up the blade that's exposed. There are two types of guides that work on here. You've got the side guides. Because of the way the blade has to rotate around the wheels, it has to be a little bit thinner. It allows you to cut intricate more curves. So those have to be in position. There's a back guide also on here that you need to be in position. To raise and lower this, there's a, a lever on the back, a wheel, a locking mechanism. Some have a rack and pinion, depending on the model. You raise and lower it to their appropriate height and tighten it. That is your guard assembly uh, adjustment. The lever on the top or the back of the top is what they call the tension handle. This is for adjusting the tension of the blade and in a general woodworking work uh, classroom setting. This will not be adjusted by any students. However, if you change the blade on one you have at home, you will need to know how to adjust this. And there's usually a gauge or refer to your owner's, owner's manual if you're not sure how. You have your table. Generally they're cast iron. I've seen people put uh, accessory tables on there to give them more room. The only limitation you really have on the bandsaw is this distance right here. The distance between the blade and the throat. And that's usually the same as the wheel diameter. They call this a 14-inch bandsaw because it has a 14-inch wheel. Underneath the table, there are two levers that allow the table to tilt for bevel cuts. You always keep the board flat on the table, so if you want to cut a bevel for some reason, picture frame, something like that, you definitely want to, to uh, bevel the table. One accessory I don't have pictured here is what's called a rip fence. If you're going to make long, straight cuts, that will help you guide with straight edges. And one other accessory for cross-cutting will be called a miter gauge and it slides right in this track and helps you guide it along. 